want to hear from the biggest expert in genetic testing about what you need to know about breast cancer gene testing and genetic testing overall for cancer, we will teach you all about it. I want to introduce you to Dr. Kevin Hughes, who's a professor at Harvard and has been the biggest national advocate for teaching the medical community and also everyone about breast cancer gene testing and cancer genetic testing. Dr. Hughes, you've helped so many people over the years. We were just talking about so many people that we haven't helped yet that are at risk for the breast cancer gene or other cancer causing genes. Where are we now and where are we going? Well, genetic testing for breast cancer genes has become really very inexpensive, very easy to obtain, and yet many women and many men have not had the testing they need to have done. So where we are now is trying to get that message out, get more women and men who have a family history of cancer in for their testing, trying to identify patients at high risk before they get cancer, and then trying to prevent that cancer or find it earlier. You know, one of the key things is that everybody hears about the breast cancer gene and may have a family history of cancer on their mother's side or their dad's side, which is just as important. But so many doctors do not identify you as having these red flags. And you kind of have to have a couple of red flags like breast cancer in your family, maybe at a younger age, ovarian cancer, colon cancer. There's many more genes than the breast cancer gene, the BRCA mutation. So what do women need to know, and men, and they're often forgotten, about their family history and whether they're at risk for carrying one of these cancer-causing genes? Sure. It's, it's it's better to know more about your family if you can. Identify who in the family had cancer, what relative they are, what side of the family they're from, how young they were when their cancer was, uh, was identified because younger cancers are more likely to be hereditary. That's a stronger red flag you're saying. Definitely. And also uh, things like pancreas cancer, ovarian cancer are also less, more rare in the population and more likely to be hereditary. So if you find a young age of diagnosis, a lot of patients in the family, cancer of the ovary in the family, males with breast cancer in the family, which is unusual, but does happen. You have to think genetic testing and get the patient tested appropriately. And part of the problem is, is that genetic testing has kind of been difficult to access. You call and say, where do I go get genetic testing? And there's not a genetic testing line. You have to see a physician and currently get counseling uh, to find out if you're at risk and also to get insurance to pay for it. But all of that has gotten a whole lot better in the last 10 years. It's gotten it? much simpler. Uh, we used to be very afraid of genetics. We weren't sure what it meant. We weren't sure how to take care of patients. It was expensive. Now it's relatively cheap. DNA sequencing has become almost as cheap as buying a computer chip, the way computers have dropped in price. More doctors understand it. More companies are there to do the testing. Some of the testing can be done directly through the company without having to go through a physician. I still recommend going through a physician and having them help you, but getting and getting a medical grade test, getting a test that's done by a lab that's that's certified for doing diagnosis, and getting that that test done. But now it's easier to do than it ever was. You know, one thing that uh, so many people hear about it was the 23andMe genetic testing. I meant to mention the breast cancer gene, but what doesn't filter through, and it's a fantastic outreach and approved by the FDA, specifically for people of Jewish descent. We can test for three little versions of that cancer gene and we feel like we should screen them and that's the reason why the FDA approved it. But if you have a 23andMe negative test and it runs a whole bunch of things and it's negative for the BRCA, that does not mean that you do not carry the breast cancer gene. It only tests for a, how, many, how much for, of a percentage? Three mutations. It's, a, it's about 10% of the mutations in the country. However, in the Jewish population, it will miss about 20 or 25% of the patients with mutations. So if you're Jewish and you have the test and it's negative, you still should have a, a, a medical test for, for DNA. Yeah. If you're not Jewish, it's not gonna pick up your mutation. So you need to have a medical grade DNA test. 23andMe is doing a service and that is identifying some of the Jewish community with mutations, but it's not a medical test and not something you would do to try to rule out or rule in this. And even if you have a mutation by 23andMe, you need to go back to a physician and get a medical grade test because 23andMe is FDA approved but it's not a medical diagnostic test. You wanna have, want have it confirmed before you act on it. And acting on it is a serious thing because if you think that you carry the breast cancer gene, we can do a lot of things to find cancers early, but some women choose to have mastectomies mm -hmm. to reduce their risk of developing breast cancer and have their ovaries out. And we don't want someone 
to go through that surgery when all along their positive test proved to not be positive. Absolutely correct. And so with 23andMe, again, they're doing a service, they're identifying patients who might have been missed otherwise, but confirm that test with a clinical grade test before you do any surgery on that patient. And prophylactic oophorectomy, removing the ovaries, is something that we know is life-saving. Removing the breast is more of an option. So just because you have this gene doesn't mean you have to have your breast removed. It could be breast removal to prevent cancer or doing MRI and mammography to find cancer early. Both are very effective. Where would you share, where, where would you suggest people search out if they carry some of the red flags that you mentioned, and there are many more, uh, in their community online to find out more about genetic testing? Well, there are a lot of resources, a lot of companies doing genetic testing, and, and searching for genetic testing companies is one way to do that. There's Color, there's Invitae, there's Myriad, there's GeneDx, and I don't want to say one or the other is better, but any of these will be able to help you. Once a mutation is identified, we have a website called ask to me ASK. ASK. This is, we're going to do a separate video on this because it is practice changing information. It takes all this data that you have at Harvard, MIT, and National International Day and puts it on one website. And tell us what ask to the number two me.org. So what we've done, we now have multiple genes we test for. It used to be BRCA1 and BRCA2. Now there are anywhere from 29 to 80 genes that, that cause cancer that we're aware of. It is very hard for physicians to keep up, myself included. So we've reviewed the literature, or we've identified the best literature for each of the genes, we've identified what cancers they cause, we've tried to develop a calculator that will tell someone if they're a female and they're 45 years old and they have a CDH1 mutation, these are the cancers they're at risk for, here's what the level of risk is, and here's what the latest guidelines are for management. Yes. So we're trying to distill this down to something very simple because it's very difficult to keep track of everything. People talk about big data, and that's what it is, is taking big data, reams of information, and putting it down in one spot. And that's the challenge. But you guys have achieved that, and we're gonna create a separate outreach video for that. If you want to learn more about breast cancer gene testing, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, breastcancercourse.org. We have a very good video specifically on breast cancer gene testing. We recommend multi-panel gene testing. If you have a lot of risk for breast cancer gene, we can test for 25 or 30 other mm -hmm. cancer-causing genes. Correct. Yep, and they cover not just breast, but colon, ovary, uterus, etc. And it's And if you do the breast cancer gene testing, essentially with the panel, you get the most up-to-date testing of cancer-causing genes that we know about, because they're all rolled into the same test in most situations, are that they That is not? correct, yes. So, and, and it's now so cheap to do, we can do these 25, 30, 40 genes for the same price we used to do just two genes. So it's just a matter of easier, more efficient testing and getting as many genes covered as you can so you don't miss something. So reach out to your primary care doctor if you feel like you have enough family history. The one thing we forgot to mention is that if you have a personal history of breast cancer, especially less than 50, that alone, 50 or less, when diagnosed, meets criteria for testing. But also if you have a family history of breast cancer, or in addition to yourself, or ovarian cancer, or melanoma, or pancreas cancer, which are related to those things, then engage your primary care doctor. If you have a cancer doctor, engage them and ask them, do you qualify? And are you interested in genetic counseling and possibly genetic testing? I completely agree. It's the right thing to do. Dr. Hughes, thank you for all you have done for so many that you've never met. And you taught me just coming to these conferences about the importance of genetic testing. And that's actually one of your work academically allows me to share the information that I've learned and other information on the Breast Cancer School for Patients, which has reached a half a million people. And we want to get this word out more. I appreciate that. And John, what you've done in terms of getting the word out is amazing, not just for cancer genes, but for all of breast cancer. Thank you. Thanks for visiting with us. My pleasure. To learn more about breast cancer, visit the Breast Cancer School for Patients, where we actually teach you everything you need to know. We're here to help you get the best possible breast cancer care in your community. Register on our website to get our list of questions to prepare you for your next doctor visit.